Chapter 15 Fractures and Broken Bones Doctors recognize two main types of fractures, simple and compound. In a simple fracture there is no break in the skin. In a compound fracture the skin will be torn and the broken ends of the bone may even be seen sticking though the skin. Of the two types, the latter is far more serious because of the danger of infection. Fractures must be handled properly right from the start. Otherwise, a simple fracture may turn into a compound fracture by rough or careless handling. There is also the danger of injuring the lungs, bladder, and other internal organs, unless one knows what to do. Here are six simple steps. Handling a fracture. 1. Send for a doctor, if at all possible. 2. Prevent further damage by applying a splint, see below, before attempting to move the victim. 3. Keep the injured person warm and comfortable, to combat shock. 4. Control bleeding. Apply heavy pressure over the bleeding vessels, using a bandage and a clean dressing. If necessary, apply a tourniquet as suggested on page 111. Cut or remove any clothing that obstructs your vision of the injured area. 5. Leave the bone fragments alone. If you see the broken bone sticking through the skin, cover with sterile gauze and apply a splint. Hold the limb steady in the position where the break occurred. Leave all further manipulation to the doctor. Take the patient to a hospital at once. 6. When in doubt whether there is a fracture or not, apply a splint as suggested below. The only purpose of a splint is to hold the bone fragments steady so that the nearby joints cannot move. Any moment of the injured limb may cause serious trouble. F10. 136 fractures and broken bones. Applying splints. Use whatever you have at hand a coat, pillow, folded blanket, magazine, or perhaps several newspapers folded together. These are all used as padding for temporary splints. Sticks, branches from trees, umbrellas, walking sticks, metal tools, broom handles, wide boards. Applying splints 137. Any of these may serve in an emergency. The main thing is to hold the broken fragments steady, preventing unnecessary movement. Be sure the splint is well padded where it touches the skin. Use any soft material for this purpose. Support the fractured limb, using a sling or other means wherever indicated. If the victim's back is injured and he must be moved, secure a wide board. Place the board beside him on the ground, and gently roll him onto the board. Take care not to bend the back in any way. He can then be carried to the nearest hospital. In case the neck is injured, someone must steady the head to keep it always in the same relationship to the body while the patient is being moved. It is well to gently pull on the head to keep the neck straight. After the individual has been placed on the board, pillows or folded blankets may be used to keep the head steady, or someone may be assigned to hold it until the victim reaches the hospital. Sprains and Bruises A sprain is an injury in which the tissues around the injured joint have been torn. This produces pain and swelling, and often some discoloration under the skin. A sprain is not a fracture, but it can be very painful. What to do? Apply cold cloths or ice to the injured joint. Con 138 Fractures and Broken Bones Continue these cold applications until the swelling subsides. One or two days later hot packs may be applied, or alternating hot and cold treatment similar to that described on page 96. But cold applications are best in the early stages of the injury. Bruises are the result of blows from some blunt instrument or surface. Usually the skin is not broken, but the tissues underneath are damaged, and many small blood vessels are torn. This subcutaneous bleeding produces the black and blue marks under the skin. A black eye is a bruise of the soft tissues around the eye. What to do? Apply cold cloths or ice immediately to the area. This will help to reduce the pain and swelling. Continue this simple treatment for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Treat every 3 or 4 hours as needed. Later you may use alternating hot and cold applications until all pain and swelling have disappeared. If the blow was heavy, have a doctor examine the injured part. 
improvising a stretcher. Carrying an injured patient in an emergency requires skill and good judgment. Many a victim with a fracture spine or pelvis has been more severely injured by well-meaning onlookers, who have picked him up and jackknifed him into the back seat of a car. For proper handling, follow these instructions. 1. Keep the victim lying flat on his back or side. If no stretcher is available, use a wide board, an ironing board, or a door, if one is handy. 2. Lay the board alongside the victim and gently roll him onto it, preferably face up. 3. Pass several loops of rope, sheeting, or other material around the board and tie firmly to keep him from falling off. 4. Gently lift the board and carry the patient to where he can secure the help he needs.